Recently, I saw this MAM NV robot vacuum and mop on sale as it had this huge, massive discount that I couldn't resist but to pick one up. But after thinking about it for a bit, I started to suspect that this was a little too good to be true. But there is only one way to find out, right? This is the BR151 model with Wi-Fi support. The initial asking price is $349, but after applying the coupons, I paid under $80 including tax to ship it to my home. Of course, this is a used unit, so I knew there were some risks associated with it. The worst thing that could happen is it doesn't work out of the box, but Amazon has a good return policy, which is why I took the chance anyway so you won't have to. This robot vacuum isn't shipped and sold by Amazon, but instead by a Chinese company called Shizi Lu Ko. Never heard of it, but I'm very interested to see what I'll get. It's got two suction modes with a 230ml water tank, which is electronically controlled instead of gravity. This allows for adjustable water flow when mopping as well. It is compatible with Alexa and Google Home, but I have heard of others not being able to get it paired to the app. Not to mention this vacuum doesn't have any instructions on what the name of the app is or how to set it up at all. Now first impressions, it is dirty. It comes with an instructions manual and a common fault problem booklet. The main unit itself is intact aside from it being so dirty. Looks like the mop pad is still attached as well but at least it's not terribly dirty. The dust box still looks okay and it is accessible by lifting up this top cover. Here's the charging station, the remote, a bag for four additional water tank filter cottons, the power adapter, cleaning brush, and the two side brushes. I'm going to wash my hands because this thing is filthy. As I clean this vacuum, let's take this time to take a closer look at some of its features. The dust box is decently sized and removing it is very easy. It does have a removable washable filter as well. The side brushes are easy to attach. Just mash the brush to the side it belongs to and snap it onto the motor. There are two contact points for charging. Between these is the universal wheel. The robot vacuum does not have a roller, but instead it uses a suction port with a squeegee to prevent solid objects from being thrown out the back. This is good for hard surfaces, but not so much for carpet. Not that you cannot clean carpet with this vacuum, but a roller generally performs better on carpet. The mop pad is removable, and its design is very basic overall. This vacuum cleaner does not have sensors to detect when it gets onto carpet to lift the mop pad, so you will have to remove the mop pad and the mounting accessory if you are not mopping. This does have an anti-drop sensor on both sides as well as the front, so a total of three. Now onto the app. As I mentioned before, there are no instructions in the instructions manual that talks about the app and pairing the vacuum to it. I have studied this booklet and looked at it multiple times and even ate 105 black licorice jelly beans through a straw. Now why can't it tell me how to set up the app? The common fault problem booklet briefly mentions something about not being able to connect to the app, but still, what is the name of the app? And how do you set it up with the robot vacuum anyway? After some research, the app is called Tuya Smart App. I will be doing this setup on iOS, but it should be pretty similar on Android devices as well. After downloading it from the iOS app store, open it and it will prompt you to log in or sign up for a new account. If you have an account, go ahead and log in now. If not, tap the sign up button, then type your email address on the next screen. Agree to the privacy policy and children's privacy statement, then tap the get verification code button. This will send a verification code to your email. Use this code for the next screen in the setup process. Once you've put in your verification code, the app will ask a few questions about collecting data related to product usage. I just turn these off, then tap the Go to App button. The app will now request several access permissions. I will enable Bluetooth, but I will not allow it to bind HomeKit devices. You can enable this setting if you do have HomeKit devices. Finally, we are brought to the Home screen. This is where we can add and manage our devices. Tap on the Add Device button, and a list of compatible devices will show. Then tap Small Home Appliances on the left. In the list of devices, find the device that says Robot Vacuum Wi-Fi. Tap on that. The app will now ask for permission to turn on local network access. Go ahead and turn this setting on if you haven't. Select your 2.4 GHz network and enter the password. This will allow the device you are trying to connect, which is our robot vacuum, 
to access your Wi-Fi network. Now, this is a tricky part. The app wants us to follow instructions in the user's manual, but our instructions manual does not come with any. This is where you will need the robot vacuum. Make sure it is not on the charging pad. Go ahead and press and hold the recharge button for about a second until you hear a beep. The power button will now begin blinking. This is what the app wants right now. Tap the confirm the indicator is blinking button. A mode will appear, then select easy mode as the light on the vacuum is blinking quickly like in the illustration on the app. The app will now search for the robot vacuum. It found it very quickly, but give it some time if it doesn't for you. Once the app has found the robot vacuum, give it a moment to add it to the app. The robot vacuum will beep a few times and connect to the app when successful. Tap the done button. We are brought immediately to the main section of the app where we can control the vacuum. There isn't much going on in terms of controls as this is a very basic robot vacuum. Aside from being able to see the cleaning time and battery level, there are a few settings you can choose to customize the cleaning procedure. Inside the schedule section, we can set the time and day of when the vacuum will begin cleaning. In the more section, we can select how powerful the suction will be and how much water to output onto the mop. Selecting and confirming a new setting will make the robot vacuum beep. This is to confirm the robot vacuum has received the command. There are a few modes to choose from like zigzag, edge cleaning, spot cleaning, random, and a manual mode. Manual mode allows you to control the vacuum via the app or the remote control. There is also an on-off button along with a recharge button. Tapping the recharge button will return the robot vacuum to the charging station. Let's talk about Alexa integration. Assuming you already have an Alexa account, you will need to find and enable the Tuya Smart App skill. Opening up the Alexa app, you will tap the More button at the bottom and then tap the Skills and Games button. In the search box at the top, search for Tuya Smart and it should be the first result. Tap that and enable it. I already have mine enabled, but if you haven't, the Alexa app will prompt you to log in with your Tuya account using your Tuya credentials. Once you've entered the email and password, the Alexa app and Tuya Smart app are now linked. Under Devices, you should see a device section for vacuum cleaners. Tap that and it should display our robot vacuum. Unfortunately, the only thing we can do via Alexa is turn it on, turn it off, or create a routine. There are no settings to set suction power levels, water levels, cleaning modes, or return to recharge. The voice commands are very limited to only on and off. As for performance from a practical standpoint, it does perform well for what I paid for at least. For under $80 after cleaning it from the box, I think it does an okay job overall, just as long as you're not dealing with small lightweight particles that can easily scatter around. On hard surfaces, the front brushes tend to fling the sprinkles around, making a larger mess. As for carpet, we can see the same effect, but because this robot vacuum uses a suction port and not a roller, it requires multiple passes to pick up all of the sprinkles. The robot vacuum will also get close along the edges where the wall meets the floor, but it will try to go under obstacles that have a small gap from the floor like a refrigerator. This causes the robot vacuum to try to go under it until it realizes it can't, then it repeats the process over and over again. When you start the vacuum, it'll always start on random mode as it does not remember the previous mode. It'll remember the cleaning strength and water control, just not the vacuum mode. On standard suction mode, I was able to get about 115 minutes of runtime before the robot vacuum needed to return to charge. In turbo mode, I was able to get 105 minutes. When the robot vacuum reaches 20% battery life, it'll stop vacuuming and find the charging station. Since it does not know where the charging station is, it'll just randomly move to different areas of the home to find the signal of the charging station. According to the instructions manual, do not place objects within 20 inches to the left and 60 inches in front of the charging station. The robot vacuum will spend 20 minutes looking for it before requiring human intervention. So it's important to keep this charging station in a wide open area where the robot vacuum will spend most of its time. It takes about 5 hours to charge and once it's done charging, you will need to manually turn it back on to vacuum. The mopping feature is really basic as the pad just drags along the floor, which works well for very light stains. This vacuum does not have a carpet detection feature to lift the mop pad once it gets onto carpet. But again, for under $80, sure, that's fine. When mopping, dampen up the mop pad, then install it back onto the robot vacuum. 
In the app or the remote control, set the amount of water to flow onto the pad. On the remote, there is only a low or high settings. You cannot turn it off. As for the app, you can set it on low or high as well as off. Sometimes, the robot vacuum will leave several drops of water behind it. I believe this is if the mop pad was not soaked properly prior to mopping. Water does not soak easily into a dry microfiber cloth unless the cloth is already soaked. Unfortunately, if you plan to mop, you'll have to find a way to prevent the robot vacuum from getting onto rugs or even carpet. This is because the robot vacuum does not have mapping or a way to edit forbidden zones. As for voice control via Alexa, you can only do two commands, on or off. Telling Alexa to turn on the vacuum will start the vacuum and it will run until it needs to recharge again. Alexa, turn on vacuum. Telling Alexa to turn off the vacuum will stop the vacuum dead in its tracks. Alexa, turn off vacuum. Alexa, turn off vacuum. It won't return to charge and will only do so if the battery level reaches 20%. Alexa, recharge vacuum. Sorry, I'm not sure. So if you want to charge, you will have to manually set it through the remote, the app, or place the robot vacuum on the charging station yourself. Or you can just tell Alexa to turn on the vacuum and let it run until it needs to recharge, but the choice is yours. Is this robot vacuum worth $349 if you were to purchase it without the discounts? I certainly don't think so. We are talking about a used product that has a very basic mopping feature, no mapping system, no automated dirt disposal at the charging base, below average suction power for its initial asking price, no carpet detection, no ability to tell which areas have been vacuumed or not, no obstacle detection, and no roller for carpet vacuuming. This robot vacuum should be the last thing to purchase at $349. Perhaps this is just a marketing technique to make it seem like someone is getting a better discount. Raise the initial asking price, then do a discount that makes it seem like the customer is getting one heck of a deal. Some years ago, during a Black Friday sale, a major retailer got themselves into trouble after raising the price to some of their products beyond MSRP. This was to make the discount seem better. Oh, that's clever right there! <laughs> oh, they're trying to trick me! <laughs> Unfortunately, I couldn't find that article, but I digress. I did see the same robot vacuum sold by other companies on Amazon, but the initial asking price was much cheaper than where I got mine. These were also new units and not used, like the one I bought. If these companies sold this vacuum cleaner used, then the price of around $80 makes perfect sense. I think I paid a fair price for a robot vacuum like this. If you can get a used one that still works as designed at a good price, then why not? Perhaps use it as a backup or just something temporarily until you can save up for the one you really want. Just be prepared for any curveballs they may throw at you. And if you're not tech savvy, you may want someone who is to help you set up this vacuum with the app. That way, you can go ahead and control various functions and set up routines to start vacuuming when you are away from home or sleeping. I hope you found this video to be useful and educational. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. As always, thanks for watching.